Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Miss Amy, and we're going to come do this fun abstract uh, face art project together. So let's go over some supplies you need for this project. You will need some white drawing paper. You will need a pencil and make sure you have an eraser on the end or a big eraser, a black Sharpie, and then something to color your picture with, whether it's markers. I have my markers out today. Or you can use crayons or colored pencil, whatever you have available you want to color with. So um, abstract um, is something that doesn't look real. It's using colors and shapes and lines um, to create our art. And so that's what we're gonna have fun with this face. Even though we recognize it as a face, because it has some of the items of the face, like the nose and mouth and eyes, it is abstract because I've never seen a real person's face look like that. So you get to design your own today though. You get to add your own colors and your own patterns and own lines to this abstract face today. Um, a famous artist that did uh, is well known for abstract art and making crazy looking faces is uh, Picasso, and he lived in the early early nineteenth or early twentieth century. And one of the uh, abstract art forms he was uh, famous for was cubism. And cubism is looking at an object from different perspectives. So something in the same object, like, like let's say you're looking at the eye and you draw the eye from one perspective or maybe facing forward, but then you see another part of the face, maybe the nose or the mouth, you draw sideways, like you're looking at the profile or sideways view of it. Um, and he would put that all together. So it would look a little mixed up and crazy, but it was a very famous style of art at that time. So this is somewhat inspired by Picasso, not a true cubism, but um, along those lines. So that's what we're gonna have fun with this one today. If you want to do your own and make your nose sideways or do some of that in the face, you can, you can surely do that. So let's get started. We are going to take a piece of our drawing paper and we're going to put it in portrait direction. That is up and down. This is landscape direction, um, back and forth, uh, long ways, but we are going to do it in portrait direction because the face just uh, fits a little better that direction. So what you're going to do before we get started, we always make, I like to make a little guideline to help us. So you just take the top of your paper and you fold it down to the bottom so they line up. Now don't push hard on this right here. You don't wanna push that flat. You just kind of wanna rub it gently. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a little faint line that goes through the middle of your paper, but as you're drawing and coloring, it's gonna flatten back out and you won't see it. Now if you were to press hard and had a hard crease, that will be there, it won't disappear. So um, to get started with this, um, you can draw with your pencil, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw with the Sharpie so that you can see it better. So what I do is I come down to that middle, that little crease line in there, and I put my finger there, and I'm just gonna draw a straight line along my finger, the length of my finger. And then I'm going to take uh, another line from the end and point it up to that upper corner. And on this side, point it up to the other corner. Then I'm going to start at this um, end of that line and just take it right off the top of my paper and the same on the other side. All right, now I'm going to go over where that little crease line is all the way over to the side and I'm going to start there and draw a big curve line, not all the way to the bottom. I'm going to leave a little space at the bottom, come back up right to that um, line or that crease on the other side there. So now I'm gonna come down uh, between my nose and the bottom of my face. I'm gonna find about halfway. And I'm just gonna draw a curved line. It looks kind of like a sad face right now. And then underneath, I'm gonna draw the same line, but in the opposite direction. So it's gonna be looking like a smile. And then you can draw a line through the middle. Now you can make this a different shape line. You can make it curvy or straight, however you would like to do. 
Okay, and then I'm going to take a line straight down from the middle of my nose to the lip, and then from the lip to the bottom of my face. All right, and now my I'm going to add a couple lines down here to create my neck. So just a line from the bottom of my face off the end of my paper, and the same thing on the other side. All right, now to make, create the eyes, we are going to start here over on the side of our paper, and we're going to make a curved line, kind of like we did on the mouth, but it's going to go all the way to the nose. So just a big... And you can leave some space at the top if you want a little more space or less space, that's totally up to you. And then we're gonna start at the nose and curve it all the way to the edge. And then on the bottom, it would be like the bottom of the mouth, that shape, like a smile shape. All the way over to the nose and from the nose all the way over to the side of the paper. All right. And then inside the eye, I'm going to draw a curved line that curves out towards the outside of my paper and then ends at the bottom there. So it touches both the top and the bottom line. On the other side, I'm going to curve it toward my nose and just make sure it touches that top and that bottom. Same thing on the other side. Do that again. Now I'm going to create a pupil. You can make any shape you want. I had some students make hearts or stars or triangles, squares. I'm going to go ahead and just do a circle, but you can be creative with this and do it however you like. Now, when you're done drawing with your pencil, you're going to trace over all your pencil lines with a Sharpie. So you get that nice thick black line like I have on here. When you do that, you can color in the pupils if you want, or you can actually color them a different color if you want to color them in with your markers. I just like to do it this way, but if you want to do it different, that's okay. So now is the fun time of adding some patterns and shapes to our face. Here's where you get to be super creative. You get to design it however you like. We've had some really crazy designs and I love it. I love that each student had a, their own unique face that they created. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make some curved lines inside the eyes. I like it to do it this way. Um, you can do it different if you want. Go ahead and just be creative with your face. I might draw some tears coming out the eye, but in a pattern, a pattern is something, a shape or a line that repeats itself. So you see how I'm repeating it? There we go. Now I always, I like to add a mustache to mine. I found it's really fun to draw a mustache. So I'm only gonna draw it on one side of the face though. So I'm gonna draw a curved line that comes up and curls around because I think those are really fun looking. And then draw a straight line down and then curve my line to follow it. There we go. And then I might draw some swirly lines and a little pattern down here kind of represents a little beard maybe to go along with that mustache. All right, so then I'm gonna do something above the eyes too. I might just make some curved lines going off because I can have fun coloring a fun pattern in those later. Now I'm gonna do it the same on both sides, but you could do something different if you wanted. All right, so let's see. Maybe make some curved lines under the eye. And then I'm gonna do some curved lines on here on the neck. All right. So you can add as much or as little as you want. Um, for this project, I'm gonna stop there and get to the coloring part, but you by any means can draw a lot more patterns and designs, however you would like to do it. And then um, definitely make sure that you trace all those lines with this black Sharpie, because then you're gonna have a nice uh, border to color with. It helps to stay in the lines when you have that nice thick black line. I know it helps me. So 
we're going to start coloring, but before we color, I am going to talk a little bit about the color wheel because I'd like you to choose some patterns of coloring um, off the color wheel here. I have a pretty basic color wheel. I have has primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. Those are colors that exist by themselves. You don't mix any other colors to create those, but all our other colors start with the uh, make by mixing our primary colors together. So when we mix two primaries together, we get a secondary. So, and they will, those fall between the two that are mixed. So when we mix our red and our yellow, we get our orange. Our yellow and blue, we get green. And then our green and violet or purple, we get uh, blue, um, sorry, blue and red, we get purple or violet. Um, and so those are secondary colors, the orange, green, and violet. Um, those little colors that are in between those, those are actually called tertiary colors. And those are when you mix a primary and a secondary together. And so when you mix a blue and a violet together, you get blue-violet. And the same all the way around here, yellow and orange, you get yellow-orange. And so... Um, I would like you to look at this color wheel. I think I believe we have it. We're going to have it on our website where you can download it and print it or download it and have it to look at. So if you need it for this project or future projects, you, you will have a color wheel. But for this project, I would like you to use um, maybe some complementary colors, which are colors that fall across each other on the color wheel. So for example, in this one, I use some complementary colors. I use purple and yellow, which are across from each other on the color wheel and they look really good together. They like make the other color pop a little bit. Uh, same with red and green, so red and green. And then I did also, I did colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So I did like r red, orange and orange and yellow, orange and yellow. Um, you could do that. Any of the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel could look really nice together. You could do warm colors and cool colors. Um, it's totally, totally up to you. Um, just a color wheel is very helpful when trying to decide what might look good together. So I'm going to set that aside for now and get started with coloring. So I am going to start with some complementary colors. I'm going to pick some blue and orange because they are across each other on the color wheel. And I am going to color half of my face. I'm going to color all these teardrops blue. So when I color, when I'm coloring something, I use usually small little color lines or strokes close together so that I fill in more of my, so less of my paper is showing through. So I don't just color big like that and have lots of gaps in my colors. I take my marker or whatever I'm using and I do short little strokes closer together. And I'm, for one, you'll be able to control where it goes better. And also um, you'll fill in more of your paper and not have paper showing through or white paper showing through. So that's a little trick to coloring that I use. And then when you're using markers, it's always helpful if you don't push down really hard on markers. If you just lightly color with markers, you'll actually, actually get better color coming out of your marker and it doesn't damage the tip of your marker then. If you push down really hard, it can damage the tip of your marker. So that's what I recommend. But you can color with, um, if you're coloring with crayons or colored pencils, you can push a little harder, depending on what you're using. That's just a little trick for markers when you're using markers. If you're working on this project and you have questions, I believe we'll have my email address. You can always email me um, any questions that you have. And I also do some free art classes through Zoom on Thursdays. 
So just, you'll have to go to our website, rlb.org, and it'll have the latest class that we're doing. And you just have to register for the class so that you get the Zoom information so that you can log in and take the class. We offer three different time slots on a Thursday. So wherever you are, you just have to make sure that you are in the right time. For where I am is one, I'm in Washington state. So one of the classes is at one o'clock my time. But if you live in Florida, that would be four o'clock your time. So you just have to pay attention to that or have your parents pay attention to that. All right, now I'm, on the other side, I'm gonna use some more complimentary colors. I'm gonna use purple and yellow again. I just like those two together also. This time though, I'm gonna use the lighter color as my mustache. And I think my lips too. Yep, lips. But I wanna do dark. See if I have a darker or a lighter yellow. Hmm. I have a lighter yellow. I'll do a lighter yellow underneath. All right. If you want, while you're coloring your face, you could use a combination of crayons and markers. I'm using just markers today, but you could you could do crayons in one half of the face and then do markers on the other half or colored pencils on half and crayons on the other half. Totally up to you what you would like to do with that. All right, I think my next colors I'm going to use, I think I'm going to add some purple here, do these other two stripes complementary too, because I like that purple. That's a pretty color. I tend to like cool colors, greens and purples and blues. Ooh, that's a nice bright yellow. shades of green that are next to each other on the color wheel. I think a blue green and a yellow green and a green and then I have a blue. So I think I'll pick a blue out and make the eyes those colors. So I have four sections. So I'm going to color each section a different color. Start with my yellow, kind of my yellow green here. I'm going to do the same on both eyes just to make it easy today. Now remember, you can do whatever you would like for yours. And then my green is next to that. I had one student make a cool, use all the colors and made a rainbow on the nose. It looked really cool. That was a lot of fun. I'm kind of a blue green color here. Okay. 
and then my blue. All right, now I need to get some, let's see, what color have I going to use? Reds. I need some reds in my picture. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out a few reds here. I have a red, I have a violet red, and then I'm going to get like a violet, a darker violet red, and then a actual violet color, which would be here. So... I'm going to do this above the eyes. And what I do with the background, I usually just color it black because I like to have all the colors show up really nicely so um, that's why I color the background black but you could color it whatever color you wanted or you could leave it white that's totally up to you To add. I think I'm going to do some um, oranges and yellows across the top. So I am going to pick just some different oranges here. Um, let's see. Here's kind of like a orange. All my oranges that I see in here and do it that way. So... Crayola markers. I have a package of Crayolas. I have a lot more choices. I like art supplies. I think this is the color I use. Is it? Oh yeah, it is. All right. So now I'm going to make. Uh, I think I'm going to use a really pretty bluish green color and color the whole nose. You can make a pattern on your nose if you wanted. Just for the ease of today in this video that we're creating, I'm just going to color it solid. But you could definitely take your time and create a beautiful pattern on your nose. Or you could just color it solid if you wanted. There we go. And the last, I'm going to use some colors down here on the neck. And there, I think I'm going to use some reds and some pinks, maybe. That's what I'll do. Pinks and purple. Pink it was just a lighter shade of red. It's just white added to red. That's how we get our pink. To make a color darker, you often will add a little, you can add a black to it. 
You can also not only add, sometimes black changes the color a little bit, but if you add the complementary color to it, you get a nice darker color. For example, if I, you know, yellow and purple are complementary colors. So if I want a darker yellow, I just add a little bit of purple to it and it will give me a nice darker yellow without changing color completely. Sometimes if you add black to yellow, you'll get kind of a greenish yellow, dark color, and it's not as pretty. If you add your purple to it, you can get a really nice dark yellow. That's just a little hint for darkening colors with complementary colors. All right, so I think for this picture, I'm gonna leave my background white. Go ahead and do it however you would like. That's very colorful today. Um, and here's my other one. I use crayons for this sample. But um, thank you for joining me for this lesson. Um, again, just keep, check our website, rlb.org. You can find out what the next lesson is going to be. And also, we, um, if you register for our classes on Thursday and take the class, but if you miss it, uh, we'll have those videos available um, for you on the website so that you can catch up and take that class if you'd like. So thank you again for joining me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.